Uh, hey everyone, we are back. Very special interview. Ed Piscor, welcome to the Comicsologist. Thanks for having me. The Comicsologist, huh? Well, that's kind of what we call it. Is the that show. you? Yes. You're the Comicsologist. <laughs> the Comicsologist. You guys might know Ed from Hip Hop Family Tree, and you're also working on a pretty awesome project coming up X Men Grand Design. So, Reading the, yep. both of these, by the way, we got to take a look at X-Men Grand Design, no big deal. Uh, I, would call, I would call it the, the most amazing uh, comic project to be coming out <laughs> in the near future. I that's just me. No, no, I, I think that's fair. That's fair. Um, reading both of those kind of together, I really get the sense that what you do is you kind of synthesize information about some cultural uh, phenomenon, and then you present it in comics form. Yeah, com comics is just a great tool for communication. Um, the the imagery of comics is very arresting to the viewer, mm -hmm. stops people in their tracks, and then um, so so my goal is to stop them in their tracks and then you know teach them about something that I really love. Yeah, you know, like the only comics you'll ever see me do are dream projects. So it's. I only do stuff about things that I really, really love. Yeah. And, um, you know, the hip-hop thing is one thing, but it was X-Men that got me into the idea of even drawing comics in the first place. I know? saw online some of your early childhood drawings of X-Men. Right. And can you tell us a little bit about how you developed yourself as an artist from those to now? Yeah. Yeah, very easily. Um, the first issue of X-Men that I was able to read, I'm saying like five or six years old, it was mm -hmm. issue 157, and I remember reading the credits box, and it said, you know, written by Chris Claremont, um, penciled by Dave Cockrum, yada yada. Right. And I asked my mom exactly what that was, and she said that these are the jobs that, um, that are required to make a comic book. So from that moment forward, the, the goal was to become a cartoonist. So very naturally started off just copying drawings yeah and then I started to uh, to make my own over time when I had a little bit more confidence and that's the stuff that you're talking about things that I did in my uh, math notebooks and, <laughs> and uh, in middle school and things like that so if your kids are doodling X-Men in their math notebooks don't discourage them because they could grow up and be the next Ed Piscor I, I, I recommend that yeah exactly yeah. like like uh you know, there was a lady in the lunch line that I was talking to, and she said her son draws a lot. And I was like, yeah, you know, just keep encouraging him. Keep encouraging him. Let him do his thing. Don't ever tell him that he can't make money because, you know, I'm wearing a Gucci hat right now. Like, <laughs> like I'm doing all right. You know, and my parents yeah. never put those barriers. Like, it right, would be so yeah. terrible to have, like, a ceiling on your head that your parents put there because yeah. of their own preconceived ideas. So speaking of Gucci hats... I feel like um, one of my favorite parts of Hip Hop Family Tree is the fashion. Yeah, me too. You know, and if you're gonna if you're gonna tell the story of hip hop visually, you have to know the fashion. How did you research for that? How did you approach presenting that in an illustrative form? Yeah, I, I grew up in those environments. Okay. Um, so, 1980s in Pittsburgh, hip hop was already all around the country. Mm -hmm. um, so I was witness to it. Okay. And, and my entry, like. I wasn't sure that I was going to do like a history of hip hop comic, but I always wanted to do a comic that took place in that landscape because I liked the idea of 1970s New York. Mm -hmm. um, I like graffiti, and I really adore the hip, the the, uh, the fashion of hip hop. Right. I got these Fly Patrick Ewing sneakers on, man. <laughs> Those are referenced in like five or six famous rap songs. If you could style any hip hop artist, living or dead, who would you choose, and what would you dress them in? Oh man! So you put you put me on the spot. I'm sorry. The thing is, I do have impeccable taste. You do. Um, <laughs> this is self-evident. It's true. Um, you know what? You have me on the spot, and I don't I'm have sorry. a good one for you. I'm sorry. Who would you like? Obviously, you oh, asked this man. question because you have you have uh, you have something in mind. I don't. I defer entirely to your knowledge. Okay, let's let's maybe make it a little less high stakes. Okay. If you were gonna hip hop an X Men character. I can answer that. Yeah. Because because in my comic, I always thought that um, when Logan's walking around with like a cowboy hat on, that that's some hillbilly bullcrap, <laughs> <laughs> and I don't like it. So so I have him in, in hoodies and um, in like camo pants. Okay, nice. I mean, he is Canadian. Do they wear cowboy hats in Canada? Whatever you call that magic Mike hat he wears, <laughs> man, I, I don't know. With, with the, so like 
curled up. Okay, next question that's probably going to put you on the spot and you can beat me up for this later. Um, do you have any playlists that you could give, like maybe give us some uh, examples of that you use to kind of get you inspired while you're doing X-Men? Oh, X-Men. Oh, that, Hip-hop, that, I feel like that one's an easy way. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't have a music playlist, but, but what I've been doing is um, I've been listening to Stephen King's body of work in audiobook form, okay. and then I've been watching the, um, the adaptation of the book into, into film, because yeah. I think that that's pretty close to what I'm doing. So, so that's, what, that's actually what no, I've been definitely. listening to. Yeah. So, so it's like, instead of taking, you know, a uh, hundred something thousand word book and, and turning it into a movie, I'm taking 8,000 pages of comics and turning them into a 240-page con. I mean, it, you're really doing, like, a public service. I think I so. I feel here. I think so. Yeah. I, I make the comics I want. Like, the things that I make are things that I want to exist. Mm -hmm. um, and, and frankly, it's a good thing that Marvel hired me in a lot of ways because I was so into this that I might have done it as, like, fan fiction yeah. and put it online for free, and people would have been like, this is, like, the raddest X-Men comic to come out in, like, forever. It's true. And it's out there for free, you know? So, so DC better watch out if I, if I want to do a Batman thing someday. Once we read a, your X-Men book, uh, say someone's never read X-Men before, this is their first experience with it, what would you recommend they pick up next, uh, besides Hip Hop Family Tree, obviously, and whatever DC project you decide to, to tackle? <laughs> well, if, if, you're just, if, you, if you're not being like X-Men specific with, with the recommendation, is that what you mean? Like yeah. it could be anything? Well, it could be it anything, be? but if you have an X-Men one also, that, that would be cool. Because I okay. feel like it's hard to get into these, these characters. Right, right. Um, you know, like you can read any old X-Men issue from, from, from 1 to 280 and, and you will be perplexed but intrigued. Mm -hmm. Because that, that's sort of what got everybody I know into X-Men. Uh, was the puzzle of it because you get an issue it's like a soap opera you, like you, you watch you watch an episode of a soap opera you've never seen you have no idea what the dynamic of the characters are yeah but then you watch the next one and then it starts to become more clear and and that's how that's how um, you know X-Men work but but I'm into comics that are made by a single person mm -hmm. um, my entire life basically I've been wanting to see a Marvel comic done by like an auteur creator yeah. who's, who's like handling every component piece because because when you work on something that closely mm -hmm. it becomes a living document until the very very last minute when the editor's like okay it's going to press you know like like a regular kind of like rank and file monthly comic each it's like divvied up it's collaborative it, well it's certainly collaborative yeah. but like the writer can't necessarily go back at any moment and change things. Yeah. And the penciler can't necessarily go back. I keep messing with this thing and keep, like, trying to polish it. Mm -hmm. um, oh, so you're talking about, like, publishing serially and how it locks you into what you've already kind of done? Yeah, like, like basically what I was getting at was if I was to give people a, a comic book recommendation, it would be to check out work uh, by cartoonists. Okay. You know, I saw on the Comixology flyer over there, like, there, there's... Um, Cobra number 13 or something or, or 30 Michelle Fife is dope oh yeah you know absolutely so like check out check out that that's a good recommendation you know, I'm, I'm really into comics by a singular creator you know not, not really so much into the assembly line yeah thank you so much for swinging by and for giving me a chance to finally do an interview wearing my sunglasses yeah 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 <laughs> I got no um, sleep last night well I I just like wearing my sunglasses you can check out Hip Hop Family Tree. And can you let us know when X-Men is going to be available? Yeah, first issue comes out in December. Second issue comes out in January. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Bye, guys.